G'day, Michael here. I've been in need of having a the ability to convert something like this with 3D model into something like this, which is like a dimension promotional um, document page, whatever. Um, and basically, so people can work out whether the product that I'm making is going to be suited, so you know, suitable for them on the website. They can decide, you know, is it the right size? Do I need the bigger one? Do I need the smaller one? Etc. All right, so I had no good method of extracting the dimensions out of the, the product. So what I did was I created the a program to use, in fact, the um, the STL output. So all the uh, vectors that are involved with making up the model saved as, a D, as an STL, then to be converted to a DXF. So I've called the utility that I've created to do that very imaginatively, STL to DXF. So um, basically it allows you to convert the STL files into these kind of wireframes that you see here and import them into like a 2D CAD program so you can dimension them and create some sort of like, I'm gonna say piece of paper, uh, either printed or a PDF or something like that. So customers or whoever can look at them on the phone or on the tablet or on a computer or whatever and work out whether that's what they want. All right, so here I'm demonstrating the Linux installation, which is a little bit different to the Windows one. I have both a Windows and a Linux version and Mac in the pipeline. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the, the web store if you want to look at the Windows version or the, the Linux version. Um, yeah, so there's both the Windows, uh, the, sorry, both the Linux and the Mac version are able to handle about uh, a million vertices. Uh, the Windows version, I don't know why the compiler won't let me do more than about a tenth of that, so it's about a hundred thousand uh, vertices. Now vertice, or vertex, is wherever you've got things coming together at a point. That's that's all that means. Right, so, um, and with that, it's really easy to underestimate the number of vertexes um, that are in a design. This one from memory has about 40,000 segments on it. And this is kind of what you're looking at if you look at the, the vertexes. See, everything's made up of actual triangles. It's not made up of rectangles, it's made up of triangles. Because that's kind of the smallest definable plane, if you like. It's three points, defines a plane. Okay, and if you look in close, you've got the text here up, up close, defined as the progressively smaller and smaller little triangles. What's not shown here is there's lots of little um, diagonals going through here because that segment there has to have some sort of triangle coming out of it so there's more to it than meets the eye even here. Alright so let's go and the first thing we do I've got the file downloaded here so let's click into that and see what we've got. There's not much to it it's got a little folder in it and uh, so that's what the source is. Now the destination is move that away a little bit the destination is going to be folder called Michael Opt or whatever your username is create a, a folder in there um, called Opt it's a good practice to get like if you download an app image or something like that put it in a directory like that so it's kind of separate from the system installation files so all right we'll grab that out of the the um, archive drop it in and basically that's the software fully installed ready to go so there's nothing to plug into the system it's it's, it's there and what do we have when we open that folder? We have, um, that's an application, that's a binary. There's STL to DXF, lint is a binary. I'm hoping this shows up well enough. I'll, I'll zoom in shortly. And then we've got a launcher. So you've got a binary and a launcher. And in the STL, there's a folder here called STLs. In the STLs folder, we've got a couple of uh, open SCAD files that you can play with. And then I've got a sample STL. Okay, so to now employ the program, we've got it installed, now we've got to employ it so it works with a single clip. You right click on the file, open with other application, search for it, and we've got to go to uh, the home folder, opt folder, STL to DXF lin, and the STL to DXF launcher. Right, now the, I'm going to set that as the default, 
So from here on, whenever I click on an STL file, it will basically do that conversion. There's one piece of software this depends on, and that's the X terminal. So whatever your um, bundle is, whatever your, your distro is, it'll be either like apt install uh, X term or um, DNF install X term or whatever it is that your package manager is. But X term is basically the terminal you can get on all systems because it's actually from Xorg themselves. So it's very easy to get hold of. Whereas like uh, if you're using a Mate desktop or a KDE or whatever, they have their own terminals. That's why I've chosen external because it's on all, all systems it's available. All right, so we've done that. I'll just go OK. Now that's just launched the external. There's a bit, a bit of blurb on the screen here. Don't worry, I'll show this differently. But that holds open for 10 seconds. All right. So that's now produced this file. If I click on that, we should open uh, QCAD. And it's a very simple object, quite simple. I might just bang this over on this left side. Let's open that guy there. See what that looks like. Okay, so here's the 3D object. I might just... Um, so that's all of that. Here's a 3D object. So the front view looks like that. Top view looks like that. And the end view looks like that. I'll just uh, make that sort of flat. Okay, so you can see there the three views that you have here. There's the end view. Front view. Top view. So. And that's the reason why I created that file. Just so you had something to load to check that everything's working. All right, so if that loads, then everything is installed correctly. All right. Now... It can do a lot bigger files than that. This file here is a lot more... Uh, this file here has a, a very small number of segments. What I'll do is I will open one of these, uh, the terminal here. I'm using the Cinnamon desktop. So it's like a GNOME terminal server or something that they use. Actually, I might just zoom in a tad so we get more of that. Right, so to, to launch it from the command line, we go dot slash, which means we're going to launch locally opt oops, and it's STL to DXF lin and the binary is called imaginatively the same thing so that's it that's the program now to load that same file that was also in the opt directory opt notice this time we didn't use dot slash here we use dot slash there because they're actually launching a program this one is happy to work just locally so it's M Michael opt yada yada STL to DXF, we get our sample file in the STLs folder, and it was cylinder cube, yeah that's it, dot STL. So if we launch that in this terminal, the terminal stay open, it won't close on us. Alright, now you can see some information here, it says there are 429 triangles, so you can see there's quite a bit actually in this design, and that comes to a total of 1,278 vertexes, so it's points. Like basically, each triangle has three corners, so it's three times the number. All right, now, this business here is the volume. So we have a minimum X of minus 60, maximum of positive 50. So the X value size is 110. Then we have minus 34 to 25, that's 59, point yada yada. And minus 50 to plus 50, size is 100. So we know sort of the volume of the... Um, the model and it spit, spit out three views the front view top view and side view which we know and the total number of lines that's 2d lines so there's a start point and end point is 329 now that sounds a bit strange we had 429 triangles going in we have three times as many views and we've got fewer uh, line segments so there's there's something that's happened. Well, that's actually what's special about STL to DXF, and that is that it cleans out anywhere a line might be over the top of one another, it cleans that out in the view. All right. Now, a small file that's only got like 400 or 500 triangles you saw is basically instant uh, conversion because that cleanup process is very simple. Now, I've got a more uh, imaginative design where I want our documents, which is this guy.
time. You can see it's very busy. That was just shy of the million um, million points. And it's a model of the Millennium Falcon, if you just view the whole thing. Uh, best fit. Yeah, best fit. There we go. So I've created this 2D drawing. I've got a couple of dimensions on it. And I've got that original sort of image in there. Okay, so we've got these three views. And you saw that took a long time just for the PDF viewer to load. So you may choose to use something like GIMP, import the PDF and save as a JPEG. Funny enough, it's a lot quicker to load because it's simplified. It doesn't have to know about the million lines. All right, now that took 75 minutes for the CPU on this computer to actually convert and um, you know, weed out all the, the garbage duplicates. And it reduced the number of lines by a factor of six on what the originals were, which is fairly logical, right? So that's the kind of amount of reduction you can expect. The original version I made just converted everything literally and didn't filter out those numbers. And so the 2D CAD program was basically buckling under the weight of the file. So I've had to do it this way. So my program works pretty hard so that the CAD program's got it fairly easy. On little files it doesn't matter, but on the big stuff it, it makes a lot of difference. You saw how even this PDF viewer uh, has its own problems. Alright, so that's that. So how to actually uh, work with these sorts of files. Let's let's go to that other one. Where is he going? Not that. This guy. So I'll just zoom out. So this is, you know, the design. I may lay that in a certain way so it gives a reasonable presentation of what it is. Just center it. Zoom in a tad more. And what I'll do is I'll export it as an image. That's the file. I've got a couple of copies already. Actually, I might go to uh, Michael. Documents. It's got the Falcon there. Okay, so we'll save that here. Good. Now I'll also save that STL file, which we have to export as STL. Go back to Michael. Documents. Save. Right, so that was that. Right, so here's that documents folder. We've now got that PNG, which I created from this. So we'll just open that to see what it looks like. Basically looks identical. Funny about that. Right, so if we zoom in and zoom out, you can see that it's actually an image, not the OpenSCAD opening. Now, because we've set it up, it's all installed, I should just have to click on that and it will load and convert. And you can see that's busy. That's 90, uh, yeah, 90,000 points or vertices, I should say. 30,000 odd triangles. Let's grab the front view. You can see this taking a little bit of time now. Create view number two. Creating view number three. So 90,000 points going in. It'll say that it's uh, completed writing the file and it'll give you the output file name, which is basically the same as input file name, plus ortho uh, and conv. Now it's 36,000, so 36,000 lines in the output. It started with 90,000 points, finished with 36,000 lines, even though there's three views. So it's pretty efficient. Now let's just have a look at that DXF file I created. There we go. So that's what that looks like. So I'll just maximize that so I can be greedy with the screen. Oh, where's that gone? Over here. Right, so there's our, our design. I might insert our image, which is that image we saved a second ago. Uh, what have we got there? I've got 120, what to do, oops. Okay, so I might do That. Okay, now let's get some dimensions happening. 
I might also um, change the dimension size a little bit to make it a bit more um, screen friendly. Hopefully this is clear enough for you to see. Going HD is kind of too cramped and 4K is a bit fine so it's a bit of a problem either way. I'll save this as 4K and see how it all plays out. Alright so there's that. So now I've got to wait. You can see the, the CAD program actually takes a little while to react because uh, if I go select all, one, two, three, four, five, there we go. It took five seconds to select all. It's saying the same thing, the 36,000, not only 37,000 lines. Right, so I just escape, so it turns eyes. Really? You can do it. Right, so it takes about a five second lag before it jumps between functions. That's 121. Is that? What else do we want? Maybe we want height, maybe. Let's do that. Okay, so if I export a PDF, that's that done. Okay, so what are the limitations of the program? Well, I've already mentioned the file size. The Linux version and the Mac version is high capacity, a, a million um, vertexes. The other limitation is the STL needs to be a text or an ASCII STL. Let's just see what that looks like. We'll open with another application. I oh, know. Let's go Bloomer, maybe. Okay, so it's got to look like that, in just plain text. If it's a binary STL file, this won't load it. But I simply converted that um, uh, the Millennium Falcon. I had received that from um, Thingiverse, and I simply loaded and saved using OpenSCAD, and it gave me the the text version of STL. And on your, you know, whatever your 3D program is, you may also be able to export a text STL as opposed to a binary. All right, so there's that. One last alert is the file name started as cylinder plus cube STL, and it finished as cylinder plus cube STL, and it added underscore ortho underscore conv dot dxf. So it's pretty unlikely some other program will label that. And so it's basically said it's a, a conversion in an orthographic format to DXF. That's kind of why that's that way. Now, uh, STLD to DXF will simply write a new file regardless of whether there's a file there or existing. So if you need to keep that output file, you need to rename it so that it doesn't get touched again. Because uh, STL to DXF will simply overwrite its own output files. No care taken. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can buy this. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.